What's up, everybody? Welcome to D. Hunter White Filmmaker. My name is D. Hunter White, and today we'll talk about The Martian, science versus fiction. The Martian, based on the novel by Andy Weir, directed by Ridley Scott and starring Matt Damon as stranded on Mars astronaut Mark Watney. Now, this movie has been critically acclaimed and applauded for its stunning visual effects and its scientific accuracy. But how accurate is the science in The Martian? To answer that question, planetary geologist Devin Waller will share with us her thoughts on this sci-fi epic. And you are hereby officially alerted that there are spoilers ahead. Hi, my name is Devin Waller. I'm a planetary geologist. I have degrees from UCLA and Arizona State University. The Martian starts off with a giant sandstorm. The problem with the dust storm that's in the movie The Martian is that it's a raging sandstorm. And on Mars, the atmospheric pressure is only, it's less than 1% of what we experience here on Earth. It doesn't have the inertia to actually pick anything up off the ground. And so what that means is you don't have the momentum to pick up large particles let alone sand, you won't be able to lift an antenna, a communication satellite, and impale a human being like it did in the movie. I think the Martian did a great job of representing the Martian landscape. They filmed it in southern Jordan, and the landscape is very near what you would see on Mars. You get these big rolling hills, you have really red sediment, and a lot of craters, a lot of cratering. So my research when I was in grad school was to study the Martian atmosphere. And primarily what I studied were these things called dust devils. They're these tornado-looking things that would just whip across the surface. And they're everywhere on Mars, especially on a nice hot summer day on Mars. And that's one thing that the Martian got really right, was that they showed during the hot days when he was out there, they showed these dust devils just whipping past. Now there was one scene though, where they showed the dust devils coming from the sky, which looked more like a tornado with this thick cloud cover. So Mars doesn't have that many clouds. It doesn't have that thick of an atmosphere, first of all, that dense of an atmosphere, to have that thick of a cloud cover. So when they were on the ground, yes, they did right. When it was coming from the sky and they were coming down like tornadoes, no, that's wrong. I definitely think it's feasible to grow potatoes the way he did on Mars. Watney, because he is a botanist, he is able to hash out a plan that makes a lot of sense in order to grow these potatoes. So what he does is he brings the Martian soil in. He has to generate more water by doing this crazy experiment using the rocket fuel that they brought with them. And he uses human excrement in order to actually make fertilizer for all the plants. The one issue with growing the potatoes that they didn't touch on in the movie was the fact that there's massive amounts of radiation hitting the Martian soil. Mars doesn't have a protective ozone layer like the Earth does, and so it's constantly being bombarded by cosmic rays, which are very harmful, and solar radiation, which is also very harmful, but not quite as much. If you have the Martian surface, which has been there for billions of years, that upper layer of soil has been just bombarded with constant radiation. Now, I wonder what that does to a person when you eat a piece of food that's been grown in it. I'm just not sure, you can do that. So at the end of the movie, it's the famous Iron Man scene where Mark Watney is being rescued. When the Hermes gets close enough and the commander in the movie goes out, she goes out on her tether to go get him, the tether is too short and she can't reach him. And then the famous Iron Man scene. So he punctures a hole in his glove and then uses the thrust to move himself through space. That's not possible. <laughs> That's not possible. First of all, he wouldn't have any control over his trajectory. He would be aiming for a target that is so tiny, and that suit would just be whipping everywhere. The other thing about that scene is that once she catches him, there's no way that he could stop the air coming out of his suit, and he would just keep going. So he would take her, the tether, whatever the tether is hooked onto, with him, and he would just fly off. I don't think that could happen. I think the big take-home message of the movie is just when you're a scientist or an engineer and you're faced with all of these difficulties, 
you stay calm and you work the problem. It's just one problem after another. And I love the line in the movie where he says, if you can solve enough problems, then you can come home. You do the math. You solve one problem, then you solve the next one, and then the next. And if you solve enough problems, you get to come home. All right. Questions?